Hi everyone. Okay. Uh, welcome you in our live broadcast. Up uh, is about uh, expanding your business in the US. So uh, welcome everyone on the Park Tech Summit page live and uh, also on our all the platforms uh, of the uh, live sessions. Uh, wherever you're watching us, and uh, we welcome to our guest AC. Uh, to uh, in our session of today's session and uh, we wish to uh, one of our speaker uh, who is uh, uh, not connecting with us due to a technical issue but uh, we have to uh, start our session so uh, i will uh, uh Therese gamble please introduce to yourself to our audience uh, yeah, go ahead. I would love to. Hello, everyone. My name is Teresa Gamble. I am located in Jacksonville, Florida, in the United States. It's in the southern northeastern of the United States in the state of Florida. I am an administrative management consultant, and I'm also the chapter director of Startup Grind Jacksonville. Have been for a little over a year now. And my expertise is helping entrepreneurs at any stage, at any level, to be able to create and repair their systems and their processes with resources and tools for them to be more effective. So it's an honor and a pleasure for me to have this platform this morning to speak with you all of how to expand into the U.S. market. So today I'm going to talk about a couple of things that that you need to know expanding to the U.S. market cut from your industry. Uh, I introduced to myself. Uh, here is uh, our asset phone from uh, uh, Faisalabad. Uh, I'm the DSC lead uh, and uh, I'm also to introduce to my uh, PR person. <laughs> Great. Uh, now I am going to introduce to my uh, peer from Startup Grind, Sawar. He's uh, uh, serving as a director to Startup Grind chapter in the Sawar, and also he's running a company in the name of UFV Tech Soul Private Limited. And uh, our today's session uh, topic is. Uh, expanding business in the USA. So uh, I'm asking AC Gamble, uh, what's about the US economy? Can well, you, uh, tell us about the US economy, how it's going on and uh, Great. I would love to. Um, right now, um, as you all know, that um, we're go dealing with the pandemic of COVID-19. So the U.S. economy has totally shifted where uh, your grocery person, your grocery clerk or your janitor, they have been become essential workers now, like first responders. So the economy has shifted to the pandemic. In other words, Individuals are looking for reactive health care items like face masks, gloves, hand sanitizer. And then you have those individuals, once they get those items, they are looking for preventive, proactive measures to keep and maintain their health and wellness. And then the third top top of the thing in our industry right now is pantry goods. In other words, people are stockpiling food that have long shelf life. And those three categories is the top revenue generating and the top demand needs that's in the U.S. My, in my economy right now. Then the other industries for us tech is number four because a lot of people are home now. They're streaming, live streaming. So if you're into the entertainment space like gaming, if you're into music, live streaming, videos, you know, demonstration of your products and services, that would be your best way to enter into the U.S. market is capitalizing on the video live streaming, email marketing, podcasting, 
and entertainment. So that is what's going on in our industry right now. But to help you all to get a little specific on the industries that you need to watch out for, a lot of 3D printing and rapid prototyping services is very high so, demand. So, uh, I will, so, yeah. So those was um, the things that's going on right now for the pandemic. And for those that's looking to do business in the United States, there are 10 top cities that you all need to be looking into to be successful uh, in okay. doing business. Uh, what's, uh, I want to know about the, uh, which loophole in the U.S. economy where we can to the... Uh, Can you repeat your question? Be looking in. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm talking about the uh, how our our startup in the USA. Yeah, uh, I'm telling that. Uh, which loophole is in the industry of the USA in which we can start our startup? Right. Okay. So the we industry can start our startup. We can initiate our startup in the uh, industry. Right. So to start your startup in the United States, the best thing to do is in 3D yeah. printing. Um, for in the technology space is if you can be have the capability to provide 3D printing of um, healthcare products and medical supplies. That's one. The second thing is for you to be able to provide um, resources through entertainment. Some form it could be some form of gaming. And then the third thing is is to be able to help those who are staying at home how to keep them still connected without having to leave their homes. So a lot of it right now is basically everybody is in homebound, working from home. Our children have not went back to public school. So everybody is still home. So if you have a startup, think about if you was in quarantine still, what tools and resources you would need to have to still stay connected to an everyday lifestyle outside of your home. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, question. Uh, I have uh, another uh, question. Uh, how uh, we can uh, enter in the any industry that expanding uh, in the USA? Uh, in which industry we can uh, take part? Like you uh, you saying about the three D printing or gaming industry. And uh, I want to know about uh, any uh, expanding industry that's uh, not uh, down in the every stage in the COVID-19 stage or uh, in the in the earliest time. Uh, which industry uh, that's expanding uh, day by day uh, in which we can start our startup, we can initiate uh, there. Yeah. Yes. Um, right now, the first thing I will have you all to do is to find the best states for you all to be successful as a startup in the United States is in the U.S., in the West and the South regions of the United States. And the top 10 cities that you would need to explore and look into is Utah, Florida, Texas, Colorado, California, North Carolina, Idaho, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Wyoming. And the reason being, most of these states, they are in the tech, the fintech on the tech space. They are in the 3D um, prototyping space. They're in the medical supply space. Those are the three top industries right now in the U.S. market that any startup can be successful in if they can innovate it. 
that's great point uh, of the uh, medical industry uh, in it uh, every startup is going to uh, initiate successfully uh, every startup uh, like uh, in our country uh, in pakistan uh, nic also focusing on the the every startup uh, that's focused uh, on the medical uh, background and uh, they support to that startup and also incubate to them uh, in, in this uh, pandemic situation they are uh, giving mentorship to all the uh, candidates uh, all the participants of the uh, initiative and uh, another question about the uh, technology policies uh, what's uh, about the uh, what's the usa's tech policies the policies for technology, um, of course, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's called GDPR. It's um, where you have to have this protection where you prevent your technology from being hacked or tampered with. You have to have certain permissions. And my community partner, Microsoft, they are the big industry leader in the U.S. with GDPR to make sure you are protected in that space, to make sure you're in compliance and that you are not penalized almost between 10 to probably 20,000 um, US dollars for not being in compliance with your technology. So that's why I stay connected with Microsoft so I can stay up to speed with that information to share with startups, especially international um, startups that's trying to emerge in the US market. And the best solution Microsoft has is if you use Microsoft 365 Business, you will have that GDPR protection already. Even on your websites, even how you engage in it doing business, they have the protocols and systems in place for startups already. I know Google has something similar, but right now Microsoft is the industry leader in that in that space for tech. And what you have to do is you have to have a home office in the United States to be an official business, even though you may live in Pakistan, but you need a home office in the United States. And the best way to do that is either to partner with a U.S. company that has that's in the same industry that you're in in order for you to be successful. In other words, as a subcontractor, they may be a prime contractor for business, but I will solicit startups to inquire to U.S. companies in those 10 states of you becoming a subcontractor on projects that they get. Yeah. Uh, the great points about the uh, policy and uh, uh, if I want to know about the uh, tech, uh, freelancers, uh, which uh, uh, policies are implemented on the freelancers, uh, those who are working in the USA? Okay, for freelancers, the policy is depending on which state that you choose out of the top 10, you have to be registered with that state as a startup, as a business. You have to have a federal tax ID number to pay taxes. And each state, each state tax bracket differs. So for in Florida, for me, I have to be registered. My business is registered in Florida, which is CRPC Consulting. I have to also register with the Department of Revenue to pay my quarterly taxes, which will be 7.65% of my revenue that I generate either per month or per quarter. Then once you have that in place, then you register with that state to show that you are actually a legitimate business. You cannot do business in the U.S. unless you register. Do people do operate without being registered? Yes. Is it illegal? Yes. And it's a big risk. And you will have a lot of liabilities if something go wrong, a customer is dissatisfied. So to protect you, your business, and your brand, and the customer, you need to go through the protocols to register your business. That is with the IRS.gov to get the federal employment ID number. That is with whichever state you choose to register to do business. So in the state of Florida, it will be sunbiz.org. Each state has a government website for their state how to do business with them. 
So that's what the first thing you need to do is research those states that you have the interest that I listed earlier. How do you do business with them as a foreign company if you do not have a home office in the United States? Uh, that's great uh, points about that. Uh, the, asking uh, about uh, how to register a company in the USA. Uh, uh, like you have to tell that uh, uh, in the basic stage, uh, we are a startup, we are initiating a startup and uh, we're going to uh, launch a company in the USA. So uh, how we can start uh, our company in the US? First of all, you got to determine what market you want to be in, what state first. And right now, um, between Florida, California, Georgia, and in Texas and North Carolina, those are the states that you all need to be looking at. Why? Population size. So you got to look at the large population states for a startup to be successful. That way you will have an opportunity to validate your minimum viable product to validate your idea and your product to see if there's an interest. So you, I would suggest on social media, connect with those different, um, say, startup grind chapters in those states and validate your idea, your startup with their community to see would they buy it? Is it something that they need? Does your product solve a problem? And once you get that data back, then that will help you determine where you need to start your business in what state and then go through the protocols I said earlier, registering with the government, getting your tax ID number, registering with that state to show that you're an actual business. And then you can be able to move forward in that market. You need to know who your custom is. Is it a female between ages 18 and 34 that um, has an occupation in the technology industry that earns $35,000 a year? Is that your ideal customer? Or is it a gentleman who is a corporate professional, a CEO of a small corporation that is age 45? to 65 and he makes um $125,000 a year. So you got the idea, you got to vet and um, validate your product and service first as a startup in the US to see if it's an interest there. So that is why I mentioned those industries that's the need right now in the US. Medical supplies, health and wellness, as well as food food pantry, long life food pantry services. And then the entertainment, which will be sports, the gaming. Uh, that's awesome. Your points. Uh, if we have uh, uh, a startup. We, we are selling selling products in the uh, Amazon web services platform. And uh, what uh, uh, policies are implemented on that uh, industry, AWS? Uh, how USA treating uh, with Amazon Web Services? Okay, Amazon Web Services is amazing. Um, back in March, I had one of my keynote speakers. She was an actual seller for Amazon. And she stated that there's a lot of protocols and trials and error that you will have to go through to determine if your product is first a market fit, um, next is it does it fit the customer market that you're reaching and there are some tools that you can use for demographics who is the top sellers for that particular product that y'all selling how much are they selling that item how much how many sales that they're making um within a week and within a month so that way if you need to pivot what you already have on amazon you'll have the data to, to be able to make that decision with but for us doing business with Amazon, of course, like I said, you have to be registered with the government. You have to have be registered with that state. You have to have the means of getting um, payment to and from you as people purchase your products. You have to make sure your pictures of your products and services are clear and and will uh, attract your customer to buy your services or your products. You have to make sure you have examples, you have re customer reviews, people who have used your products and services um, before you put it on Amazon, what was their experience with it? Because in the US, they really read 
product and customer reviews, Google reviews, Amazon reviews. So make sure if you're going to promise something, make sure you deliver what you promise. That's the good uh, points about the AWS services <laughs> and uh, uh, government is also treating uh, very clear in, in the clear mode with the uh, Amazon and we uh, talk about the uh, tax market, uh, taxes uh, that apply on the market. <laughs> how, how is it treating with them uh, and on which uh, industry taxes are applied and uh, any industry that is not uh, uh, under the taxes uh, uh, in the USA market? Oh, tax, the U.S., they tax everything. You will not, there is no tax-free zone in the U.S. Everything is taxed. And again, that's why I was telling you earlier, it depends on what state you do businesses, the tax rates are even different. So for instance, in Florida, in Jacksonville, our tax rate is 7.65%. But in Georgia, where my other company is, the taxes is 8.9%. So it just varies on the state because of what the taxes are allocated for. So that's another thing that you need to keep in your arsenal when you research it and determine where, what state you want to incorporate to do business to look at the taxes. And according to my research, Jacksonville, Florida, Northeast Florida of the South and Southern U.S. has the lowest tax rate for businesses, 7.65%. So if you're charging services that say $150, you're going to multiply 7.65% and that amount is your taxes. And you add your taxes to your your flat, your um, price. Then the customer pays the actual price for your services and products plus the taxes. But a lot of times with you all being in, being international, you can incorporate the tax in your full price. The customer doesn't have to see that. You can put 150 plus what that tax is and then add an administrative processing fee. So when they pay you, you don't have to pay those fees from say PayPal or Cash App or, or Venmo or WeChat the different payment um, plans, you don't have to pay that processing fee. That's uh, good. Uh, we have a shortage of time, but uh, I want to ask an important thing. What's the experience of you within the uh, USA industry? Uh, how, uh, what's the experience of you, your personal experience? Can you share with our audience uh, while listening to us from Pakistan and uh, different areas? And they want to know about the USA uh, industry experience of you. Okay. Um, my personal experience um, as a woman is, is difficult. Uh, the U.S. is very dominant with um, uh, white privileged races. So for a woman, you have to be very educated. You have to be very innovative. You have to be outgoing. You have to be very positive and know your stuff, whether it's the product or the service. But I have been successful because I participated with the Chamber of Commerce, um, a lot of the economic development groups. I used to be a school teacher. So I already had a lot of community relationships. So community relationships are very important in the United States. That's how people val um, validate you, give um, get your credibility. So they know you for not just your business name, but know you for your expertise. Hone your craft. Know who you are. Don't be afraid, any of you, to reach out and be speakers at U.S. US conferences because that we need to learn more about the entrepreneurship ecosystem in Pakistan, just as you all want to know more about the U.S. markets. And that is the first way I encourage all of you to do. Volunteer solicit to be a speaker 
at a conference in your industry. If you need help finding and getting placed with a specific industry for a conference, I am more than happy to research and help connect you to the right person. But personally, my experience, I've been in business for five years. I've been doing everything that I have done for a little over 30. I have had some ups seasons. I've had some low seasons, but I've learned it even either season I learned something from it, how to do something better. And when a door is closed, you don't get upset. You don't quit. You pivot. Okay, this is not an opportunity. So where can I go next? Because you are the visionary. You are the person that has the expertise and knowledge to solve that problem. So I encourage all of you in Pakistan, do not be afraid. Do not get complacent. Yes, it's going to be difficult because of our cultural backgrounds, but all of us was created uniquely different to solve all kinds of problems on this globe. That's great uh, advice and uh, motivation startups in Pakistan. And uh, one and last advice for startups uh, in the Pakistan, those who are working in Pakistan, uh, can you uh, give advice to our Pakistani startups, those uh, who are on the initial stage, what to do uh, to them and how they can uh, move on and grow uh, yourself and grow with the industry? Okay, great. So what I will tell you in the very early stages, make sure you write down everything, everything that you've tried, everything that worked, everything that didn't work, even the things you probably had to tweak or change a little bit. Keep a journal and write everything down, even the products, the tools that you are using. Then you would need to connect with um, Umar. Uh, all the startup grind chapters in Pakistan because we're getting so much education and information and we getting ready to launch this new startup program soon membership program you will get connected with a plethora of mentors around the globe to help you stay connected, innovative, and also prepare you to pitch your business to investors, to invest in your startup. So as you your demand get great, you can get the funding to help you emerge and expand and innovate. So always stay connected with Startup Grind because it's constantly changing and evolving, especially with the founder who just raised $15 million of C money during the pandemic so i want to encourage you write down everything you know what worked what didn't work what you need to change what you need to do different and most importantly get you a mentor or mentors that you are a trusted influence of voice it may not be in pakistan it could be someone in the startup grind global community but stay connected follow them online on social media and that way you can learn from them i have a youtube channel I have podcasts. You Mar knows I put all my content there because as I find out about it, I share it. So that is the advice I want to give you. Always keep learning. Always keep investing in you and make sure you do your research and homework. What state you want to incorporate in in the United States. So, thank you so much. So I think if one uh, just left us there is a lot of you know internet issues today we are issues such facing us all right so thank you so much for your time we have another session on the same time so we have to end the broadcast thank you so much participants for joining thank the session. you thank you goodbye